much. My my story was uh, was was around when I was uh, I worked for DFID in uh, in 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 China and uh, on the DFID side managed uh, a large rural development program. Uh, which have generally been quite su successful uh, w with with the World Bank, and uh, and we were asked, particularly in China, was quite sensitive. Why does the UK spend money in uh, development aid in China? And so I got the question, like like, so how many people have you lifted out of? Has the program lifted out of poverty already? And we were just starting the the, the measurement uh, that 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 Martin Revelion. Revelion uh, had been invo was involved in in, this, in design, and I remember his, his analysis that that said, well, oh, basically said, oh, we need about five years before we know anything about that, and and after ten years we know the real impact because he showed uh, he showed very nicely that the, the positive impact kind of uh, not that it tempered off, but, but but other regions were kind of kind of catching up. So I said, oh, it's way too early to tell, of course. So so the next day I got this question again: How many? <laughs> people has this program lifted out of poverty. And by day three, I started to realize that to say, oh, it was way too early to ask, was actually a career-limiting move, right? So we were, <laughs> but, but, but the flip side to that, of course, is, is, is and, and that, that's my question to the other presentation, there's, there's no way around this, right? We still do need to have this, this data, and I, I, I definitely want to, to, to challenge the other presenters to think about uh, what, what uh, the, the, the needed accountability behind this measure so that this, this, this data actually can work. Even though I was trained as a sociologist and as a social historian, I do believe that these data are absolutely, absolutely essential. Uh, what I want to talk about is something uh, very different in a way and certainly doesn't fit in, uh, in, in a session on unpacking numbers because what this effectively does is, is, uh, is further packing our arsenal of numbers that, that, that may or may not be available. I imagine that after this session, many people who walk out of here said, said, said that, that what we're proposing here is, uh, is, is no, uh, no go. Uh, what, what I think we're proposing here is, is one very important. When I was listening to Ravi Kambur yesterday, like I said, I was trained as a, you know, uh, not in a quantitative uh, style at all, and you'll see that through my, through my press presentation. Uh, but when, when Ravi, uh, and so I believe in case studies, national history, are important. But Ravi Kambu yesterday talked about the Nordic model and, and his desire, and I think it was absolutely right to say, so, so how did, did uh, if we want to learn lessons from a Nordic model, we need to understand how uh, norms of egalitarianism uh, originated in a Nordic, a Nordic context. And, and I thought, like, oh, that's, that's exactly the kind of things that, that, that hopefully we're, we, we're making contribution here, is that there are certain aspects of an overall development process, and I think it's very appropriate to talk about this when we talk about inclusive, uh, inclusive uh, growth, that so far have not been measured. So what I'm proposing here is not an alternative to anything. I don't have any comments on the uh, on, on, on Morton's uh, presentation, just the fear that he will, he will, uh, he will discover uh, that in many cases uh, his critique applied to these, uh, to these as well. But it's a different aspect of the development process that a, a, a part of a development community has emphasized for a long time, but so far uh, hasn't been uh, measured. Uh, this, uh, this project is currently at the Institute of, uh, of Social Studies. It actually came out of the, the World Bank. Uh, from a group of uh, social development uh, people that that felt, and this is a Morton is a very interesting story about how they how they felt the need to bring so to to quantify social uh, so social development, and and have come up they came up with a database. And another interesting part of the story, I've left ISS now, so I can't talk about it. Is, is why the World Bank didn't want to keep it. Uh, maybe for uh, well that there that had not not much to do with social development in general, but the kind of uh, problem that the international issues like the World Bank uh, regularly came under when they published any sort of data, they would be phoned up by prime ministers said, why is our country suddenly poorer or richer than, than the other one? Um, the idea that uh, of the executive director uh, uh, of the World Bank looking at the Indies of social development, certainly ones on accountability in China, of course, makes it Quite obvious why this, 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 the World Bank wanted this an independent institution, and we thought that it's uh, that it was useful to do. Now, in the meantime, I've left ISS. There's other people that are working uh, working on this, but I thought it would be appropriate for the, for this conference to give you an insight in what this database does, specifically with uh, respect to Africa, of course. 
So um, these are the topics that I hope to talk about, and I, I hope you remind me of the time, Mr. Chair, uh, because my jet lag uh, makes me even less uh, disciplined than I usually are. Um, I won't say a lot about why social development uh, matters, uh, but, but uh, as I said before, this, this very much came out of a tradition of social development specialists uh, uh, that, that were strongly represented in the World Bank, in uh, many of the um, uh, other donor agencies as well. And, and, and the key to, to social development, the kind of core to the definition of this, this measurement instrument, is that this is around the behaviors norms, conventions, uh, that pattern uh, human interaction. Say the soft aspects of, uh, of development, but what, what most people, when they start talking about informal institutions, will quickly say, these are actually very, they may be very soft aspects of, of, of development, but they have very big implications for most of the development processes, markets, and governance that we're, uh, that we're interested in. Um, up till uh, 20 years ago, 10 years ago even, uh, most of the social development work was, was entirely qualitative, um, while the, in, in many other areas, uh, of course, the, the uh, uh, measurement instrument developed quite, uh, quite, quite rapidly. And in a way, if you think about uh, how we measured tons of steel about 100 years ago, uh, and, and, and are now, it's now uh, acceptable for economists to measure happiness, doesn't make me that happy, but 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 it is now it is now accepted in a way. You can see this 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 indice of social development as the last mile in this uh, sequence. Uh, so what this does, uh, the promise of it is that it systemizes and compares different aspects of social development, and of course I'll talk about the different aspects uh, and relate those to to other development outcomes. And I'll I'll do that in in very simple uh, bivariate graphs uh, for for Africa and trends over time, which I will not say much about because. The data uh, in Africa is 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 is, is too limited to uh, to say anything meaningful about uh, about trends. How does this matter for for Africa? Any development uh, story uh, brings out issues like uh, like this: the importance of conflict, often defined as ethnic conflict, very poorly defined in uh, in general. Uh, the importance of kinship uh, and and the way that 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 uh, that impacts the quality of institutions. I think it can go, go, go both, both ways, but it's generally portrayed as, as being, being negative, as being traditional. Uh, the role of informal institutions. The changes in informal uh, institutions uh, uh, during ongoing structural transformation, uh, maybe particular uh, urbanization. So a question, if you think about Africa, the low-income part of, uh, of Africa, uh, how the soft dimensions of... Uh, uh, of, of, of development are important in those, uh, th those contexts. What does it measure? Um, the six aspects of uh, social development, as I said, and I'll, I'll mention them in a, in a minute, these are derived from uh, a very wide range of databases, about 20, uh, 25, so of course, the quality of this data is entirely dependent on the quality of those databases. Uh, they are generally regarded as uh, reputable. Um, out of those 25 uh, databases we, uh, we work with, the, the database works with about 200 different indicators, and it aggregates uh, those uh, f uh, using a, a method that is called matching uh, percentiles. Um, I can't explain how that how that works. What I can tell you is that it's exactly the same, or pretty much the same as the, world, the way world governance indicators are, are aggregated. And basically what it, what it I can't exp explain the technical detail, but basically what it, what it does is that it brings together rankings on the different indices. And if, if, if in those different rankings, at least two uh, of the same countries appear, it kind of merges those two to create, if you have uh, one ranking of three countries, one ranking of two countries, it, 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 it merges that in a way that it, say, artificially enhances the coverage of, uh, of, of, of countries. Um, uh, and, and that's really all I want to say. And like I said, the, the reference is, is to uh, people familiar with the world governance indicators are familiar with that. And my co-author, one of the co-authors, would need it to be here to tell you how this is done in detail. I just want to talk about what it, uh, what it does, uh, which indicators we have. 
the first one is civic activism. And this uh, uh, is, of course, the, 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 the popularity of this uh, was enormously enhanced during recent uh, the Arab Spring, different uh, social uprising. So this, what this measures through, uh, uh, through the use of those different databases is social norms, organizations, and, and practices which facilitate citizens' involvement in public policies and, uh, and, and decisions. So examples of those questions, people participating in demonstrations, uh, access to information, uh, there's data on density of uh, international organizations, and Civicus has a civil society rating. And, and in the right column there, you see where those uh, different, uh, and, and there are many more of that, of course, uh, where those different in the, uh, the, the various indicators come from. In the case of Africa, of course, the Afro uh, barometer, uh, I mentioned the regional barometer, but of course the Afro barometer is, is a very important, uh, important instrument and very rapidly uh, growing with, I think it's four main round now in, uh, in, in publication. Uh, the Afrobarometer would give you many of those data but not for the same number of, uh, of countries. So um, the kind of data, and, and this is not to suggest anything, uh, well, there, there is a line, so I guess I am suggesting, uh, suggesting uh, something and that something is, is, is good, uh, good news, is that if you take the global database that there is a positive correlation, that I think is good news, uh, between uh, GDP uh, levels of this is levels of GDP and civic uh, activism. Uh, this has been analyzed quite carefully for the global database, and it actually has, uh, I'm sure, with, 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 with lots of caveats, but has established that there's actually a causal relation uh, uh, measured by Granger, Granger causality from uh, per capita to civic activism, i.e., better country, better off countries allow citizens to to uh, to to express uh, civic activism. Uh, more strongly, uh, what you see for, uh, for 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 Africa is that uh, that as a, as a whole uh, uh, within Africa there would be, be something of a similar correlation. But of course, the numbers are, are very small, uh, and that the uh, levels of civic activism compared to the global sample is uh, is, is is quite a bit uh, quite a bit lower. Uh, but 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 still the the, the overall uh, the overall story about that that positive if if one could do it, if there's anything that one can suggest that even within within Africa that, that that there is a little bit of that positive correlation, like I said, the kind of thing that we were hoping to see. The second is on clubs and associations. How much time have I used, Mister? That okay. Um, so I'll talk about for one minute on each of those. Uh, this is uh, kind of the. I guess the classic social capital, the strength of ties uh, to neighborhood and associational uh, life, uh, the kind of questions uh, that, that are in there are, are the use of free uh, time, membership of clubs, uh, time spent socializing, uh, and, and, and norms around, uh, or not, rather than norms, uh, whether people actively support, uh, support others. Again, uh, it's from those, uh, those type of surveys. And here you see, uh, uh, a pattern that is uh, that is a little uh, a little different actually uh, we don 't uh, get that kind of uh, good uh, good news uh, the global uh, database I, I think there 's actually uh, this other analysis that actually even a little bit of a of a negative correlation we there is on the global database we actually see a decline in the levels of clubs and uh, and, and associations and 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 this was just the first analysis and it can actually mean very different you don't see that in the in, in the graph but there's certainly no positive positive correlation the trends over time show a decline in clubs and associations uh, which may actually well be uh, because of a shift of associational activities to the internet which is not very well measured uh, me measured in that um, for Africa, that would not be that, uh, that, that relevant. Uh, but what we do see there, uh, of course, is, uh, is, 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 well, really nothing, I suppose. It's a very wide distribution, uh, very uh, high levels of uh, associational activity in certain countries. Um, uh, so so uh, not like the, the, the first one where, where we, did, uh, we, we could discern some pattern Safety and trust, um, the extent that people feel they can rely on, uh, on, on others, uh, questions that, that are quite common in global databases around experience of theft, people feeling safe, uh, perceptions that people can be, uh, can be trusted. 
uh, and again the sources. Uh, here what we see uh, the global database is uh, shows um, I, I, I guess what one would expect that uh, that uh, richer countries are people feel safer uh, safety may contribute to uh, to, to economic uh, growth of course we have no idea which which direction it goes uh, the global the yeah, global analysis has has not shown any any clear patterns uh, patterns in there certainly no uh, no causality and and then of course in in, in Africa uh, uh, I think that there's well if there was a, any correlation it would be very very uh, very weak uh, but of course the the enormous uh, diversity in terms of levels and and, and trust which. I don't know if that 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 matches. Uh, people might wonder why why Libya was uh, is so high up in in terms of the of the safety and uh, that that was of course in in a particular period we wouldn't get the same numbers uh, numbers now. Um, so four to six are all around. Um, uh, these are kind of. Uh, Perhaps social capital type of these, these the four to six are all around uh, uh, cohesion and, and equality, uh, um, and the first one on that is around intergroup cohesion, the relationship of cooperation and respect between uh, identity groups in in society, and and we think that that if you know there's been quite some uh, some analysis earlier on, on on the role of ethnic conflict and development, uh, we certainly think and hope that 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 these data will allow us to do this much much better than, than what I think were very poor indicators used in, in those data set. The kind of questions are around incidents of riots, uh, levels of ethnic religious tension, uh, and, and at the micro level, a uh, proportion of people who reject others as, uh, as, as neighbors. Uh, a variety of, uh, of database that is built on, uh, including a fund for peace and, and minorities at, uh, at risk. It is actually quite quite stunning how much data there is available on those uh, on those uh, those issues, uh, and and this is the pattern that we uh, that that we, we we get again enormous uh, diversity within within Africa, which which that that same diversity does not exist and uh, well, is is actually there in, in the global database as well. And as as I guess one would expect, very low levels of, of cohesion in, in certain uh, certain countries and if I'm not mistaken if I remember well there 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 is this would would suggest some some positive cor correlation as one would expect that 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 cohesion would increase as countries go uh, grow richer uh, but of course some of the outliers uh, 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 the growth may well be based on very exclusionary patterns. I'm, I know I'm not saying anything new, but what I'm saying here is that there is a potential to actually measure that, in, start measuring this in a cross-country cross basis. Inclusion of minorities. Um, these are, it's quite close to, to the previous ones, of course, but this is but it's more about the levels uh, of perceptions and reported discrimination, uh, the uneven uh, ratings on an economic uneven economic development between uh, groups and also a little bit on, uh, on, on ethnic tensions, um, uh, which, which, which shows us a, a pattern which is, which is not very different actually from the, uh, the intergroup, uh, intergroup cohesion, certainly with the same kind of, uh, 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 same, same kind of outliers. But there's also very clear cases of countries where, where this, this does measure something different, where the intergroup cohesion scores high and on, on minority scores low and, and, and vice versa. And I mentioned the examples in the, uh, in the paper. Um, the final one is, is gender equality. Um, and, and of course, there's a whole, this is, I think, uh, among the six, uh, the least, uh, least new. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and there are many uh, uh, variants of, of, uh, of global gender equality, uh, equality measures. So let me skip that. Um, there, uh, I'll skip that one as well. And come to the conclusion. Now, this, this was not to make a point about the interrelationship of uh, so the softer aspect of development and broader aspects, but but really to suggest to you that that with this database we can uh, now measure uh, measure this, uh, and of course it, it is very clear to most of you in the room who who are uh, who have quantitative skills the kind of uh, the kind of uh, issues that need to be uh, addressed. Uh, the Africa data, uh, the coverage is much better than I would have expected. Actually, much more database exists. 
uh, but, but certainly if you look at uh, changes over time, there's a lot of work to be, uh, to be done. And um, if uh, they, these are not, 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 not clear correlations, of course, but if you look at the graphs, you do see the kind of trends that you would, uh, would expect, certainly on the issues of activism. Well, the activism, in, if, if it is true in that, uh, in that sense, not with the causation, the other way around, with intergroup cohesion, more inclusive societies, uh, well, let's put it this way, that what it seems to suggest is that there is no necessary trade-off between wealth creation and, uh, and, and aspects of, uh, of, of inclusion. Um, that didn't go for so far for the, uh, the, the measurement of clubs and, uh, and association, and, and the one on safety and trust also we would perhaps have expected a, a clearer pattern uh, there. But like I said, certainly on some of these, if, if one can draw any conclusion that so far we, we, we don't uh, see that, uh, that, that trade-off, i.e. Uh, potentially uh, a focus on, on, uh, on growth and, and developing more inclusive societies are, are not alternatives that can go hand in hand. Sorry, I took too much time, I'm sure. No, just right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.